Well, Danny, we'll start with the, the big news to come out of Busfield Town today, the appointment of, of Neil Hart as the club's new CEO. Your reaction to that? Obviously delighted. Um, welcome him to the club. I think it's a, a really, really good appointment for the football club moving forward. For me, if you want to have a successful football club, then the football department and the business department have to be aligned and have to work together. And we look forward to, to, to working with him mo mo moving forward. I would focus just on the fact that he came come from the community arm of, of, of Burnley and had done quite a good, good job there. I know community is, is at the heart of Huddersfield Town and I know that community is at the heart of, of what you do and what you plan to do. Absolutely, you know, I think that, that was a, a, a big reason behind the appointment. Um, you're only as strong as, 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 as your supporters and our supporters mean an awful lot to us. And, you know, the way, the way we work as, as a football club is, is to, to always have their best interests at heart. And um, we want people that, that believe in, in people and believe in the community. And um, certainly in his career today, he, he has done that. And, and certainly, you know, Bernie's a football club have a, have a big community um, um, profile as well. So, so no, it's um, it's a really good appointment. It's you know we're we're looking forward to him coming into the building and 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 I think for us just 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 aligning ourselves and we're pretty clear on where we want to take the football club. Um, but like I said, you're always trying to align yourself so that you can get put the, the right processes in place. Focusing on the football side of things, how's the mood in the camp been then after that result on Tuesday? It's been pretty good. We obviously had a long journey back from, from London on, on Tuesday night. Got back to Huddersfield around four o'clock. Um, but uh, the, the coach was, 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 was in good spirits. And I think um, after the game, I was, I was doing, doing some media and we were going from the pitch to, to, to the media suite at Charlton. And as we passed the change room, David and I, you could hear the boys <laughs> singing the Matt Daly song and he's, he's one of our own so yeah no, I think they, they, the, the, the changing room and, and the staff as well and, and certainly the supporters all enjoyed what was a very very important victory for us There certainly were quite a, a lot of celebration after that win I asked Jan Stankovic the question I'll ask it to you as well was that because it was a late winner away from home or was it a reflection of, of the difficult times that you've had in, in recent times and, and you've all kind of felt that Probably both, but 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 definitely the, the, certainly the latter. Um, it was a it was a it was a fantastic victory for us when you consider the amount of things that have been going against us um, in terms of injuries, particularly, but also arriving late and the, and the effect that that had on our preparations. And it was an awful lot of excuses. We did a piece of work this morning around how we won, why we won, and. Um, trying to sum up the reasons in three words and there was some, you know, the togetherness and the spirit uh, and the determination and the, and, and the resilience were, 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 were right up there. Um, I think we created our own word actually, which was ex excuseless. So, which we, which we, which you might actually come up with. Um, but, but no, certainly there was no excuses and, you know, we said in the training room before the game, it doesn't matter what they throw at us, you know, we're gonna we're gonna dig deep and we're gonna fight hard for each other and, and we're gonna find a way and we were we were really determined to do that and um, I think because of all of the qualities that we needed in that game and because of the fact we were able to show those qualities, we were we were ultimately really proud at the at the final whistle. I'll get on the on the phone to Oxford Dictionary and get that one in. Um, <laughs> Another word that I wanted to focus on, you've used it there, you used it when speaking after the game as well, was, was togetherness. Um, I wonder, is that something that you've wanted to achieve more than anything during your time at Huddersfield Town? How important is that togetherness in your squad? I think, I think it's everything. I've been fortunate enough to be involved in some successful dressing rooms um, and it's always about the, the, the spirit, um, about people being selfless, putting the team before themselves. And it's a very easy quality to have when things are going well, much harder to, to, 
to enjoy when, when, when things are not going as well, when you're not winning as much as you would like. Um, but it's something that's, that's essential if you want to, be, want to be a successful team. And there is a coming together, there's no doubt. Um, the spirit every single day is growing. We're, we're clear on what the cause is. We now have a, a like-minded dressing room. And I think when you have a like-minded dressing room, um, with everyone sharing similar values, and you have a common cause, then, then, then you can start to achieve things. I'll touch on personnel and Wigan in, in a couple of moments' time, but just to, to draw on those characteristics that you've, you've listed there, I imagine that isn't exampled any more so than young Matty Daly. And, and his interview with the club on the Twitter afterwards was <laughs> absolutely fantastic, actually. Um, there was a young man who understood what it meant to play for Huddersfield Town, who clearly just won the winner, um, just scored the winner, I should say. That attitude and that approach, I imagine, is what you would expect to see from all of your players. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a, um, it was a brilliant interview, wasn't it? <laughs> He's been media trained by David. Um, but no, it was just a, it was just a great moment. I actually, I, I love listening to, to interviews by managers and players after games, and that goes right up there in my top five favourite favourite post-match interviews because you just saw a young kid telling, telling it how it was and he's, he's, definitely, had, he's definitely had worse days than, than, than Tuesday night and it was um, a great moment for him and I said to him after it, 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 it wasn't that night that he created that, it was all the work that he's done in the lead up to that and he's worked really, really hard on the training pitch, he's worked in the areas that, that don't come as naturally to him. He could just carry on working at what, what he's good at, but he, um, he's been intelligent enough and focused enough to work on the areas. And for him, it's always against the ball. So it's the, it's the pressing and um, the, react, the, the reactive uh, pressure, but also just to take a bit more thought in the defensive side of the game, because he's such an intelligent boy. You, don't, you see the things he can do offensively. He wouldn't be able to do that without having a really good game understanding and a, and a tactical intelligence. And it's... In tactical intelligence and it's just flipping that sometimes yeah. and saying well now look at it against the ball and without the ball and how you can affect things and he's he's really he's really bought into that and I was I was well pleased for him and <laughs> it was um like you said a, a, a fantastic goal a brilliant moment and, and an even better interview. Wigan as a team as an opponent um we were just saying before you came in I think there's only been on a handful of occasions you've been able to say that you're coming up against a team that are below you in, in the championship table. How do you view them as an opponent, particularly in their own ground as well? A tough opponent. Nicky and I went to, to Wigan last night and watched them play West Brom. Um, huge pitch, vertically really, really, really long. Um, they played really well on the night. They deserved to win the game. Um, made seven changes, so they've freshened their group up. They've got the squad depth to be able to do that. We, we probably haven't at the moment. They, um, they played a 4-2-3-1. They possessed the ball. They asked an awful lot of questions of, a, of a, an outstanding West Brom team. Carried real threat in, in wide areas. Looked good on the counter-attack through, through their, 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 the pace that they have in higher, higher ends of the pitch. And probably other than one lapse of concentration... They would, have, they would have definitely won the game. So we understand that we're going to are a, really, are a really good team. Um, I think if you look at their season thus far, they've got just on the wrong side of a lot of close games and probably got on the wrong side of games that they should have taken more from. Certainly that's what we've seen when we've watched them. And they, they definitely haven't got value for... for for their, their performances and, and sometimes that can happen um, but, but we, we're under no illusions of exactly how tough it's going to be against Wigan and um, we, we know it's our third game in a week it's also their third game in a week um, we had a long trip on Tuesday but they played on Wednesday so we're going to need to um, going to need to recover really well which we have done and then prepare really well to, to go to Wigan and, and try to find a way to, to get on the right side of the result.